What's up guys, PJ here from 3D Printing Canada. Today in front of me I have some products from Matter 3D. They're a local to Canada company out of British Columbia. The first thing I want to talk about is this PLA and how to print it. So I do find that it is a little bit trickier to print. I found anywhere between, I've even printed it at 240. Now I know that doesn't make sense unless you're printing really fast where you need higher temperatures because it's never actually reaching that. But his PLA, actually the performance PLA, I printed it at 240 came out super strong. I actually ended up using 60% fan instead of 100, um, where normally you'd use 100. Uh, prints really, really good. Um, you might find you're able to print it at around 230, but I definitely found that it didn't print at a regular PLA temperature like 210, 220 even. I found it needed to be hotter. Uh, with that being said, nothing else really changes in the factor of how to print PLA, other than maybe it's a little bit hotter. Um, like I said, 230 to 240 I found was best, and I actually lowered my fan to 60% to get the best results. Uh, still 60 on the bed. I like to use glue stick for everything. Um, so yeah, it is a little bit trickier to print, but it prints really amazing. So if you wanted something uh, maybe a little bit stronger, like a shelf bracket or something, and you still wanted to just print it out of PLA, Matter PLA would be great for that. Um, uh, let's move on to something else, like their wood-filled PLA, which I actually have in front of me here. Um, let's take a look here, I'll open it up. These ones were actually factory seconds where the spools got damaged in shipping, so I'll, I'll open this one up and uh, we'll take a little beauty shot of it here. Uh, don't mind the little bit of a crushed cardboard, it got over vacuum sealed. Um, this stuff is awesome. Uh, it's their cedar, I believe. It's called cedar. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, it's cedar. Uh, it prints great. Um, the look of it is just, you don't even see the layer lines, guys. When I'm, I kid you not, uh, Lee printed uh, uh, the Jaffe staff or something from Star Wars out of it. Wow. I mean, Absolutely amazing stuff. Um, you will need to dry this filament. So if you do purchase it, I highly recommend, uh, if you don't have a dryer, or using a food dehydrator or your oven or something, you're definitely gonna need to dry this filament. Me personally, uh, we have dryers here in the shop, so I ran it in the dryer for about four to six hours at about 55 C, perfect. Dry and ready to print. Um, Again, same type of settings as PLA, uh, you know, about 230-ish with his PLA, we'll say to 240, and I actually used 100% fan with this one, so it was a little bit different. Again, if you ever have trouble with a filament, get back to the basics, no matter what filament line it is, start with a hollow cube to get your extrusion multiplier dialed or your flow rate if you're using Cura. Now what you want to do is just do one wall, so kind of like vase mode, but do a cube. If you have a 0.4 nozzle and a 0.4 width line, you when you measure that wall with a pair of calipers, it should be 0.045 would be the max and 0.04 would be the minimum. I would say more for one would be better because you don't want to under extrude a little too much where your parts are weak. Um, so starting with that hollow cube, only one outline, maybe two bottoms, just so you can measure that wall width line to make sure you're not over extruding. That'll help with your support um, uh, removal and things like that. Because if you're over extruding, you're pushing too much plastic, hence you could end up getting stringing as well, um, even if your retractions were at their maximum retraction distance, which is anywhere on a Bowden tube between four and six, depending on the length of the tube, I've seen them run upwards of seven or eight. 
uh, but that is a really long Bowden tube. And then on a direct drive, most direct drives won't retract over two millimeters. A lot of them are between 0.5 and one millimeter, depending on the drive. So just keep that in mind. So if you're getting stringing or parts aren't fitting together, guarantee you, you're over extruding. Uh, so moving on from the wood filament, we'll talk about their PET-G. Love their product for their PET-G too. Uh, again, I found it printed a little hotter. I had to print this stuff at about 250 with no part cooling fan. I didn't use any at all and it came out beautiful. Um, so if you're having any trouble with PET-G, uh, definitely be using some glue stick to get it to stick to the bed because that's my go-to for pretty much everything, the Elmer's washable purple glue stick. Uh, and again, yeah, about 250 with this stuff I found was, was pretty good. It does range between 230 and 270 on the box. I found for myself, I printed at 230. Now, with that being said, um, it could vary on the type of nozzle you're using too. So if you're just using brass, I'm pretty sure you'd be good 240 maybe. Um, I use hardened steel for everything. Uh, most of my stuff's running with 0.6 hardened steel or vanadium from Slice Engineering, um, which we will actually move on to in some of his other products here. But I did find that 250 was my sweet spot um, and I didn't use any part cooling fan. You could introduce again up to about 30% part cooling with that. And don't forget the glue stick. I find it's a must with PETG. So if you're having any type of bed adhesion problems with it, go ahead and add some glue stick. All right, um, let's move forward. I've got some of his ABS here as well, the Performance ABS. Again, another good product. You're going to have to dry this product. Uh, take it out of the box and dry it. Um, anything besides PLA and maybe some uh, regular style pet G's, I normally, I, I always just rule a thumb, I throw it in the dryer. Um, now with the ABS, I like to go around 70C. Um, I'll let it dry overnight and then I'll print with it from the dryer the next day. So it's drying while it's printing um, and I get the best results that way. So if you are having trouble with it, um, ABS is definitely a lot trickier. You can do things like uh, taking chopped up ABS. Um, there's, a, there's a way to dilute it. You can Google that. I'm not gonna uh, get into those aspects yet, but you can use acetone with ABS mixed in it and then you spread it on your glass or your carbon fiber. I wouldn't do that on carbon fiber with the acetone, but the glue stick, uh, on the carbon fiber would be fine. Uh, if you wanted to try, it's called ABS slurry. Uh, you could go ahead and get yourself some acetone and chop up some of the ABS and let it dissolve in there and then spread that on the bed and it will stick to it. Uh, really good. All ABSs are hard to print. So whether you're using, you know, Matter 3D ABS or you're using our standard line ABS, they're all gonna be trickier to print if you're new to it. Um, if you're not new to it, I would say you probably already know how to dial it, dry it, and do the proper temperature towers. Um, I can't stress that enough with a new filament, how you should always be doing test prints, no matter what it is. Temperature towers are one of the most important things to dialing a filament. So if you're having a hard time, go ahead and get yourself a temperature tower off of Thingiverse. It's gonna save you a lot of wasted material. Um, again, if you're printing ABS, you need an enclosure. Um, a heated chamber would be ideal, but an enclosure uh, is a must. Uh, unless the parts three quarters of an inch tall, you're probably not gonna have success. Uh, and the bigger and longer the print, the more chance of it warping off the bed and having layer separation issues due to small drafts, etc. So, now we're gonna move on to their PTG carbon fiber. So I'll actually open this one up so you can see it. The rest are just pretty much basic. So we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll open up this roll and we'll have Jaren, you know, hopefully you can get a nice shot. You can actually see the carbon fiber in this filament. Um, absolutely wonderful stuff. If you do not use a hardened steel nozzle with this filament and you use brass, I can promise you in one print because of the carbon content in this material, it is going to blow a one millimeter hole in your brass nozzle in one print. 
I've done it, I can promise you. I just wanted to see what would happen. And sure enough, about a one millimeter hole in that brass nozzle. Uh, personally, I use vanadium nozzles from Slice Engineering, or I use M2 hardened steel from Micro Swiss. Uh, that's my preferred nozzles. The reason I don't like to use uh, clone nozzles for carbon fibers and stuff is because you're probably gonna jam them up. Um, we do have a decent clone nozzle here for MK8 and E3D.6 that does work very well. They're affordable, they're about $8 a piece. Um, but if you are gonna get into any type of carbon printing, you're definitely gonna need 0.6 hardened steel. Or again, like I said, I've been loving the Slice Engineering vanadium nozzles. There, I'm going like a year on the same nozzle without any headaches, love it. Gotta put my hat off to Slice Engineering for using vanadium for a nozzle. And uh, with the Matter Pet G, 245, uh, I used about 20% cooling fan. Uh, again, glue stick, most definitely we're gonna use glue stick with this stuff, and 245, as well as you're gonna have to dry it. I tried to print it without drying it at first, I didn't have any success. Uh, I put it in the dryer overnight at 70 C, came back in in the morning, printed like butter. Absolutely love the way this stuff looks. Once you dial this filament, you will have some clean, beautiful looking parts. Absolutely love this stuff. I highly recommend it. It is more of a premium price, but you're getting a lot of carbon fiber in there with that filament. So the next filament I have from Matter 3D, um, we can show you guys because it's actually just white nylon. Um, normally we have like the e-sun or something and it's like a natural nylon. So I'll uh, just give you guys a little look at it here if you haven't seen it yet. We've got just the natural nylon here. Sorry, sorry not natural, the white nylon. I love this stuff, guys. I love it. He's done a great job for somebody who's newer to making filament. His filament impresses me. Uh, it's Canadian made, which I love. Uh, you're getting it from a local source. You're helping our economy. I absolutely love the fact that it was made here in Canada. Um, my hat's off to Matter 3D for how they, they, they just, when they come out with this nylon, send it to me to test him being new to making filament and how easy it was to print. Buddy, good job. Good job, Eamon. You did an, a wonderful job with your nylon. Now, with that being said, is your basic Creality printer gonna print it? Probably not. You are gonna need an enclosure. I find that's a must with anything above PETG. So we'll just kind of leave that on the table for everything. Once it's past PETG, TPU, and PLA, you need an enclosure. Um, this nylon will need to be dried. I dry it overnight. It'll come back into work the next morning when I get a filament, um, and I'll dry it while printing it. Now, it says 255 to 285. I didn't have good success at 260. I was getting layer separation issues. So I bumped it up to 270, fixed everything. Um, most of your printers, if you're still just using a basic stock printer, are not gonna print this. Um, you will need firmware changes, hot end changes, etc. because you're gonna be printing this stuff at 270 or above, I can promise you that. So guys, I'm actually really impressed with how far along Matter 3D has come in such a short amount of time. I've had companies, and I'm not gonna put any names out there, send me filament to try, um, and it's been a nylon, and they've been doing filament for years, and the stuff won't even stick to itself. So Eamon, my hat's off to you again with this nylon product, your nylon carbon fiber, your PETG carbon fiber, your wood filament is, people love it, it's, it's, it's wonderful, my friend. Um, so I guess some of the beginners might have a little bit of a hard time with the PLA because it's not like just like our house brand or our standard line or value PLA where they're just really easy to print. You kind of throw the stock settings at it. Um, what I am going to do is make a whole separate video for you guys on slicer settings with the Matter 3D. So we'll sit down and we'll go over with Prusa Slicer. Um, I know a lot of you might use Cura, but I personally prefer Prusa Slicer. So I will go through some of the settings and what helped me. But to be honest with you, I find it is really just the temperature thing and maybe lowering your fan a bit with um, the Matter PLA. Um, so if you are having any problems, you guys can feel free to give me a shout here at the shop, ask for PJ. I'm always willing to help guys. So with that being said, I hope you like this video. Check out this stuff. If you haven't printed with it yet, I highly recommend it. I'd give it a shot. See you in the next video.